going to take you down the line, which I've created with this easy Elizabethan braid stitch, and just take the lime green, which is behind and slightly underneath these stitches. So all you do is you just take your needle down, just as you would normally for the cruel stem stitch, take the loop out of the way, and then bring your needle up just slightly underneath the metal thread, and then take it away to the side. So you're taking your needle really closely to the metal thread embroidery that's underneath. This is a level three kit because using all these different materials and different wools with metal thread and quite, um, they're not really complicated stitches, but they're quite exact stitches, does require a sort of um, consistency and tension. So when you're making these scrolls, they're just going to sit over that wool when you fiddle around with it with your needle. So first of all, you stitch down this side and then you stitch down the opposite side. And as you see, I'm bringing my loop over the top of the braid so that the needle always comes up on the, on the side of the actual braid piece. So I've taken you down this side. Now I'm going to start again from the top because I wouldn't actually run my thread back along. Um, it's just the way I work. I work down towards my belly when I'm stitching the cruel stem stitch. So I'm just putting a little tiny stitch in there and about a centimeter further on, up the line I'm about to stitch to reach the top of this braid. So bring your thread just near the top of the metal thread without going through on the back um, next to the metal. So you don't want to abrade your wool by the harshness of the metal thread. Now it's incredibly important with all these stitches to make sure that your frame is really tight and your linen is taut. And I'm just going to tighten it a little bit because when I notice that the warp and the weft are slightly uneven, and the um, ridges from the twill are just waving about a bit, you know that there's some slacker areas. Now this should be much nicer. Oh yes, that sounds better. And you just hear that lovely hollow sound when you come up through, even with this very fine Renaissance Persian type of thread. So you can just see how that sets off the braid stitch you're doing. So whichever style of braid stitch you choose, if you choose the more complicated Elizabethan braid stitch or any of the Elizabethan braid stitches, that's fantastic. Um, but over to you because I'm sticking with the easy version and backing it up with the wool thread. So I think that looks rather wonderful. And I'm going to now spend some time just easing those loops over the top of the stem, stitch to the side over the green wool thread and I think you'll agree that that just the way that the light bounces off the gold but is absorbed by the wool I think is rather gorgeous and of course that is representing the silk that over the last 350-400 years has just dulled to that sort of um, dullness rather than a sheen that the silk would have had when it was originally made. 